my mother, and I think I told you this on the opening night of To Kill a M- Mockingbird. Mm. My mother mm. was a domestic. My mother cleaned houses. And so when I saw your beautiful version of Calpurnia and, and the 2018 version, um, Broadway version of To Kill a Mockingbird, I was so happy to see it being turned away from the white savior focus of Atticus Finch <laughs> and to incorporate Calpurnia as someone who was not only the moral compass for the family, but actually was a true co-parent to those children. That's right. So I want to know, how much did you influence this reimagining of Calpurnia? Because when I look at her, I, it reminds me of the way my mother operated as, um, as a housekeeper. She would sometimes bring us with her to work. And when I tell you, she wasn't subservient. She really did crack the whip on those folks. They couldn't be under feet when she was cleaning the house. She made them call her Miss Geraldine. Like, you know, there were rules to this game. Mm-hmm. And so it reminded me, your your version of Calpurnia reminded me so much of my mom. But please tell me, how much of that did you influence? Oh, listen, It Calpurnia lives in, in my soul, in my spirit, from how, how I grew up with my grandmother, who was a housekeeper. Then she she was a, a domestic in a, in a private home. They used to call it private home work. She was in yes. private homes in Atlanta, Georgia. And then she went on to become the maid for and, and the cook at a school, at a white elementary school, until she retired. So I, um, and you heard me say maid and cook, because yes. um, they had to do both then. Mm-hmm. And... So her DNA lives in, in me every day, and yes. I wanted to honor her and honor all of those women who built this country Amen. because, remember now, the men who run corporations, the CEOs and all, all the ones, even those who, I, I, if you look at the history of America, people don't quite understand that you didn't even have to be rich to have a maid. Nope. It was almost <laughs> uh, a given that somebody yes. would go come in there and work, you know, mm-hmm. so, because they paid them so little. Right. And, um, and, and that happened. So I wanted to honor that legacy that lives with me for all of those women whom I know were, were such an important part of history. And that's what I told Aaron Sorkin, who wrote the, the piece who was so wonderful in that regard, to give Calpurnia agency, and which is why I came to do the part, because I said, "Mm -mm, you you know, you can get anybody to go be the maid. I said, because (laughs) I am, that book, I said, you know, I get that book, but no, it wasn't number one on my hit parade. Everybody, you know, always thought that uh, To Kill a Market (laughs) was the number one book. They said, well, what was your number one? I said, their eyes were watching God. Amen. Come on down, Zora. (laughs) I said, that was it for me. <laughs> so, and then a book called Night, Elie Wiesel's Night, about the Jewish oh, Holocaust. I said, those are the books that, mm-hmm. that live in my DNA. But I love Mockingbird, you know. It was a, an incredible story that Aaron told. I, I wish COVID had not shut it down. Hopefully it'll come back so that more people can see it. But we developed that through workshops, you know, and, and wow. giving her trial and area of, era of things that we thought that she could say and still be um, a classy woman. Mm-hmm. You know, that she wasn't um, just hardcore, um, or what is it that, that they always like to say about uh, attitude. Oh, yes. give a great attitude. I said, oh, no, honey, that's no. something you all make up. <laughs> <laughs> this is our reality. This is not right. um, attitude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That she wasn't just that, that she was the discipline of, of her growing up and her, her environment. 